Hey Summoners, how's it going? My name is Nathan Ng, and in this video I'll give you guys a rundown of the latest builds on patch 12.14. With the latest patch, we have a new wave of innovative setups, and like the title of the video suggests, we have plenty straight from Korean solo queue that we want to share with you. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content like this, and let's get the video started. First, let's talk about some top lane builds. Renekton has been seeing more play recently as a result of the buff that he received his ultimate. With some additional AD scaling added to his ultimate, he's slightly stronger than before. The additional damage gives him some more dominance in lane and also ensures that he doesn't fall off as hard if the game drags on. Even with a single item, the buff provides a solid increase in Renekton's damage output. Remember that Conqueror also provides adaptive force, making Renekton a much more competitive top lane opponent than before. That being said, here's a build that players are running on him now. For runes, say Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Conditioning, Overgrowth, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. His items are Blade of the Rune King, Defensive Boots, Sunfire Aegis, Death's Dance, Mob Memorius, and Guardian Angel. Sunfire Aegis is oddly picking up some traction. Combined with his ultimate, you're gaining a massive amount of AoE damage, forcing enemies to deal with you, otherwise allowing you to hard carry fights. In addition, the tenacity the item grants you makes it much harder to kite you. With other offensive items in the build, you're also strong enough to quickly cut through squishies. Next on the list is Silas. One thing to note is that players are taking ghosts on him rather than flash. Although you do miss out on the ability to immediately burst down enemies from a short distance away, ghost is better for longer fights and is available on a shorter cooldown. For his runes, you'll take Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend of Alacrity, Last Stand, Bone Plating, Revitalize, Double Adaptive Force, and a defensive rune of choice. Next are the items, which are Rift Maker, Ionian Boost of Lucidity, Man Immune, Cosmic Drive, Zhonya's Hourglass, and Spirit Visage. This build provides an abundance of defensive stats, allowing you to play Silas as a battle mage who wants to dive into fights and stay there. It's because of this build that Summoner Ghost feels right. You're not looking to deal insane burst damage. Instead, you just want to chase down enemies and milk all the healing that you can with your W, Spirit Visage, and Rift Maker. That covers the top lane build, so put them up on the screen one more time for you guys to check out. Take note of them, and let's move on to the jungle next. For our first jungle build, we'll talk about one for Viego. This build is annoying to play against because it makes him so hard to kill. At the same time, he deals insane damage. His runes are Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Conditioning, Overgrowth, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Health. You have no issues clearing the jungle, so you should opt into health for the insane value that you'll get later into the game. For the items, build Blade of the Rune King, Defensive Boots, Sunfire Aegis, Death Stance, Wit's End, and Guardian Angel. The attack speed items from this build provide adequate damage, while Sunfire Aegis and the defensive stats from the build makes him nearly impossible to kill. They are nerfing Sunfire Aegis next patch, but if you build health, he should still be pretty viable. The mythic item also ensures that you're not sacrificing much damage, as the immolate passive damage should add up over fights, especially for getting takedowns and healing throughout them. Before moving on, I also wanted to take a quick moment to shout out our coaching staff at ProGuides.com. The meta is constantly changing, and if you ever find yourself lost or struggling to improve, we have a great team of experts that you can work with to set you on the right path. Second for the jungle, we have a build for Belveth. While most of the build is standard, I'll talk about the small change that players are making for a huge difference. First, let's talk about the build though. Her runes are Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Conditioning, Overgrowth, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Health. Her items are Blade of the Rune King, Berserker's Griefs, Frostfire Gauntlet, Death Stance, Wit's End, and Guardian Angel. Frostfire Gauntlet is the word pick up here. However, the reason that you want it is that it gives you everything that you need. The extra durability is excellent since you're going to be fighting aggressive, close combat fights. It's inevitable that you'll be taking a beating in the process. Like with Sunfire, it'll also ensure that you don't completely miss out on damage just because you're not building an offensive mythic item. With the addition of some ability haste, you're looking at a solid line of bonus stats. However, the slow that you gain from his passive is amazing on Belbeth. Slowing down enemies slightly also increases your damage output with her. Since your enemies need to spend more time moving, that gives you an opportunity to land more basic attacks before you have to start chasing them down. If they choose to stand their ground and fight you, well then it's also a win because you'll naturally win most of those fights. That covers the jungle build, so let's take a look at the screen for a quick recap. Next are the mid lane builds. With Neela finishing her first full patch, it's time that we covered a full build for her that players can reference. That being said, this build is actually one for her to use in the mid lane, which is why there's also an adjustment to it. Although this isn't the most commonly used build overall, it's a solid one that we're seeing players use, especially on the Korean server. For runes, say Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Conditioning, Overgrowth, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. For items, build Trinity Force, Berserker's Grease, Phantom Dancer, Bloodthirster, Infinity Edge, and either Death Stance or Maul Memorius instead, if the enemy team has a lot of magic damage. Although you lose a little bit of survivability taking Trinity Force, you get more damage, mobility, and ability haste to work with. 
With a shorter lane, you don't need sustain as much since you can push fast and recall. Instead, the extra mobility allows you to quickly roam to side lane for a game. Also, let me ask you a question of the day. What are your thoughts on Nila? Whenever she's ended up on my team, things haven't panned out too well. However, my experience playing against her has been pretty unpleasant. She feels super strong, especially because of her W. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and let's continue on with the video. While Silver has been dominating the bottom lane since her recent update, it's also worth noting that she's more capable of holding her own weight in the mid lane as well. Because of how insane her pushing power is, she's almost always going to get lane priority, and is always extremely safe because of it. It also feels nearly impossible to gank her as she has her spell shield, ultimate, and flash while it's not on cooldown. After pushing in the lane, Sivir is free to either roam or follow roams at any time. She's also a powerful mid and late game threat, so she has no problems just pushing in for the sake of farming up. For runes, say Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Conditioning, Overgrowth, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. Her items are Kraken Slayer, Berserker's Grease, Phantom Dancer, Infinity Edge, Lord Dominic's Regards, and Guardian Angel. That's it for the mid lane, so make sure to take a look on the screen for the build recap. Next is the bot lane. For the bot lane, we'll start with a new build for Callista focused on quickly bursting enemies down. For runes, take Hail of Blades, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Ultimate Hunter, Presence of Mind, Coup de Grace, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. Her items are Immortal Shield Bow, Berserker's Greaves, Man Immune, The Collector, Edge of Night, and Wit's End. You also want to max Q first with this build, as your goal is to try to quickly burst down enemies. It's packed with a ton of AD, and Wit's End still makes it possible for you to deal respectable DPS in team fights. That being said, with the addition of defensive stats from Shield Bow, Edge of Night, and Wit's End, enemies will also have a harder time trying to dive her in team fights. Next is a support build for Amumu. While the pick itself isn't anything unique, this build takes a more aggressive approach. For runes, say Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Coup de Grace, Ultimate Hunter, Cheap Shot, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. Rather than opting for Aftershock or just the Resolve Tree overall, you're taking Conqueror combined with damage focused runes. Also, you have Ultimate Hunter. As everyone knows, he has one of the best ultimates in the game. For items, build Relic Shield, Defensive Boots, Everfrost, Demonic Embrace, Zanyas, and either Wardstone or Morello. Nomicon. As I mentioned earlier, this is an extremely aggressive build that focuses on one of Amumu's most overlooked abilities, his potential to deal impressive damage. He's an underrated battle mage, but the biggest struggle is not getting shed out early on. Luckily with Relic Shield, he can secure some early gold. He can also work together with his lane partner to get through the early game with some well-planned aggression like level 6 all limbs. Finally, we'll wrap up the video with the build for Duo. Namely, we have Shaco Jungle and Yumi support working together to ruin the game for their enemies. Shaco is already a powerful threat in solo queue. He's able to one-shot enemies, especially when they're distracted by other things going on in the teamfight. Otherwise, he can pick out a position enemies and all of this gets easier when Yumi is attached. In a way, she can secure kills for Shaco, or instead help him get out after he takes down his victims. With the utility of her and her ultimates lockdown, Shaco has even more freedom to clown on his enemies. For Shaco's build, take Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Sudden Impact, Treasure Hunter, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. His items are Blade of the Ruined King, Berserker's Greaves, Sunfire Aegis, Black Cleaver, Ravenous Hydra, and either Death's Dance or Mom Amortius. Yumi takes Summon Airy, Manaflow Band, Transcendence, Gathering Storm, Presence of Mind, Cut Down, Devil Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. That's it for the build, so we'll put them on the screen for you guys to see. Also, that'll wrap up our Korean builds for patch 12.14. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments down below, and also join our Discord if you want to be part of the community. You can find the link in the description. That's all for today, guys. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.